Hello, Justin with Lucky 8 Off-Road, and today I'm going to show you how to install our new Proud Rhino winch bumper for the new Defender L663. In other videos, I've shown you how to strip all of this down. So if you need that information, you can go take a look at our hidden winch mount. That one basically teaches you how to disassemble the front end. And uh, we're using Project 110. You haven't seen that in a while. It's going to get one of the new bumpers. So cue the intro, we'll meet back here with the center section and get this installed. Okay, in the hardware kit, you're gonna get a bunch of M12 bolts with some really thick washers, the thick washers Go on the back side here of the frame to give it a little bit more support. And the little washer goes on the inside. You'll also notice there is a shorter bolt. That shorter bolt goes right here. We are not using the outer ones for the inner portion. We're using the ones directly in line with the frame. And that is that way we can get the most strength out of the frame. So up here, here, and here and here, both sides. Uh, in the interest of speed, I'll just put this on and we'll come back and we'll have a look at it. With all the hardware in place loosely, you wanna make sure that the bumper center section is in fact in the center. You can wiggle it one way or another, and then when you go to put the wings on, one side's gonna stick out farther than the other and look silly. I tend to leave it almost all loose, get them close, but have the ability to move the bumper center section back and forth a little bit until we get the coolers and the wings in. All right, like I said, we leave the hardware loose because we want to make sure this is in the center. But another thing is we want to get this uh, radiator core support bracket on. Again, I'll apologize. There'll be a lot of apologies, but this 110 has been through the ringer and it is missing an aluminum block that goes right here with two studs and bolts. You're going to reuse those and bolt this up. If for some reason you've lost yours like I have, just some uh, 10 mil hardware will hold that in place. And what that does is it stops the radiator support from moving. So we'll just get this bolt in. Line it up. We'll be good to go. I'll get that done and we'll move to the next step. All right, next up is the wing. Well, there's two of them, wings. This little tab right here is the bottom. We're gonna bolt the radiator, well, the little lower radiators that go there, support bracket to that. So that's an easy way to tell which one's which. And you can always do that, it fits on like so. Before we put it on, I like to put in the, oh, let me back up a second, held on one, two, three, with three 10 millimeter bolts on each side, but there is a little sensor bracket for our park distance sensors that we want to glue in place here. You can do it after, but it's really tight to get in there with the uh, little radiator. So I like to do it beforehand. I'm going to glue those in and then we'll uh, have a look at them. All right, next up, it's inner cooler time. Uh, first thing you're going to want to do is kind of cap off, pinch off the coolant hoses on the car. That way you will reduce how much coolant you lose. If you lose too much coolant, it goes everywhere. You're gonna have to vacuum the system down to refill it. If you got a shop doing it, it's not a big deal. They do it all the time. But if you're at home, you wanna kind of limit what you lose. If you lose a little bit out of the cooler and then refill it, you're good to go. If you lose a ton, all right, we're gonna have to vacuum it down. So we wanna pinch these off. Uh, these are little uh, radiator hose clamps, or you can do it with a pair of uh, vice grips like needle nose, Just don't wanna rip your hose. So I recommend these. That out of the way, you're gonna have the inner cooler out, the inner cooler bracketry out. And this is where it's gonna get a little bit dodgy in this video. I'm looking for a new truck to do this job on so we can do it from the beginning. But until then, this is all I got. The poor 110 has been through the ringer. We're going to take everything apart. This kind of bolts here. 
right? Sits in here like so. You're gonna reuse the hardware that goes here. I have a photo of what it looks like when it's installed on the, call them the radiator grills, right? So the cooler's gonna sit like so, and then it's gonna tuck in behind the bumper. I'll show you that in a minute. All right, first thing we're gonna wanna do, I'm gonna jump over to the picture for now and kind of talk my way through this, is there is the piece that clamps on to the radiator. It's held on with two bolts. You're gonna to wanna to keep that because we're going to reuse that piece. You're going to reuse the hardware and then screw it on to the radiator grill. It, there is a left and a right radiator grill, so just mind your orientation. 3D printed piece. We're gonna to want to take the rubber section out of the old plastic housing, stick it right in here. You'll notice on the bottom, there's a little bump out and on the top where the rubber piece sticks in, that way you can slide it like so on the radiator housing and it'll hold it in place. It's got 5.5 mil bolt and nuts. We're going to then, with the rubber piece in place, bolt it to the housing. So when you're all done, it should look just like this picture. Uh, another little tip here with the bracket that holds, snaps onto the radiator like so, sits onto the grill like so. This piece at the bottom, you know, we'll get this out of the way wants to bolt right here and this side kind of falls out on the bend. What I like to do is just grind that lip down a little bit so that it fits in there without being forced. So little tip. Okay, you should look like this. 3D printed part bolted in, two bolts here. Ours is obviously missing one due to all the prototyping and you're ready to set this inside the wing. If you recalled, I told you there was two holes down here in the wings. I left them a little bit loose so that we can wiggle them around to make it easier to get the coolers in. Okay, the trick is we're just gonna slide this in gently. Make sure it's below this outrigger for the upper radiator support. And I like to have the plastic tab on the inside. It gives me more room to reach in here for the uh, park distance sensor, but you can jam them in either way. All right, next up with that in, I'm just gonna put the uh, six mil Allens down on the bottom. Okay, next up, we need to run the cooler lines to the intercoolers. So on all the vehicles, I got this little crossover hose that goes in the bottom. There's a hole inside the winch tray and you can kind of pop it up, clip it in like so. It's a, whoop, sorry about that. It's a little bit wonky, you know, depending on which model you have. So be very careful you're not twisting it. Once you've got it loosened up and laid in place, they sit real nice. You don't want to be bothered with any of that. You want to remove everything down here. You can jumper the hoses together with the silicone hose that we supply in the kit. So that's what I'm gonna do on this one for the example before we put the winch in. I'm gonna kind of loop it up, zip tie it here and bring it over. How do you connect it to this hose is the next question. First up, we wanna get off the little plastic connector. Oh boy. We need that. You want to be very careful with it. There's two O-rings inside. Don't ruin them. You won't need the hose or that clip anymore. We supply you with hose clamps. Hose clamp goes like so. Plastic doodad goes in. Put it on, tighten it down, cut it to length. When we hop back, I'll show you what I did. Next up on the passenger side, we're gonna to want to remove this hose right here to get the end off of it so we can put it on our 
cooler. When you do that, coolant's going to pour out. So what I do is put a little clamp on it, take the end off, get the end inside the radiator, work the hose length over to right where we need it. Then we're gonna pop this off real quick. Uh, I usually have some help, so they plug the hole with their finger. We strip that end off real fast and snap it in. Okay, next up, we want to identify this hose that runs across the top, and we're gonna use our clamp, clamp it here, pop the uh, spring clip off, and remove this hard plastic line. This is what the hose looks out. We want to keep this small piece with the T. Essentially, this plastic tube is heat shrunk on there. So if you're brave, you want to warm it up with a little torch, it'll slip right off. I'm going to use old school, and I'm just going to kind of take a razor knife gently a bunch of times on it until it kind of goes through and comes loose. Job done. Now we're going to take the new hose, hose clamp it here, run it down with the other quick connect that we have from the other side from that hose and the cooling system will be back in place. We're getting close folks. Next up, we have to put the outrigger on. There is a little cutout and that goes to the top. You can try to put it the other way, but it doesn't fit so good. On the inside, we're gonna remember we left that hardware loose. We're gonna take the two outer nuts off, put this in place, and it'll line right up with the bolting point to the wing. We'll do it on both sides. I'll bring the camera and you can see how it looks when it's done. And then after that, it's gonna be time to start tightening all this up so the bumper sits pretty. All right, that's how it goes, right there. And then this Allen head, we put through like so, and connect it to the bumper. Okay, we are complete on the lower section. So what we wanna do is kind of align it. Things will move a little bit this way and that way so it looks the way you want it to look and start tightening up. First, you wanna look at it side to side. Make sure your center section is indeed in the center and then tighten all of that down. So the one, two, three, four on each side, that'll be nice and tight. Then we're gonna play with the wings a little bit Get those adjusted to where you want them. Sometimes your car's got a little bump in it. You can adjust the wing one way or another. You're gonna tighten those down. And then finally, the last one, the Allen on the outrigger will hold everything together. After that's done, we're gonna dump in the winch. Okay, next up, put the winch in, get your wiring where it needs to be. If you wanna readjust your tube on the lower or the up, upper, this is the time to do it. I also recommend just getting in place. We're not gonna tighten it down yet because we're gonna work on the skid plate and everything at the end. But let's just make sure those nuts inside the winch that love to run away. We don't wanna give them that opportunity. So we're gonna put our bolts in there, hold the winch down, and then I'm gonna bring it down a little bit and we're going to put the top plate on. Okay, next up is the top section. This one is without the A-bar. Some of them have the A-bar. Uh, there's a bolts that go right here and bolts that go right here. And oh, maybe you can see it over here. That's the one that goes here. And then the other ones go through the side. Uh, we want to glue in uh, epoxy in our sensor mounts. So we're going to put those in and the camera, we're going to epoxy that in also. I'm not putting the camera in for this one because I'm going to do another video later on and I need the camera. So. Also, if you're doing the fog lights that come in our kit, perfect time to put them in. You also wanna put on your fair lead and your swivels because you can reach in easily and get to all that. If you didn't buy that stuff, then don't worry about it because you're not doing it. Okay, I'm gonna put the sensors in or the sensor mounts in and set this in place. 
Okay, it's really coming together now. In your hardware kit, you're gonna have a 10 mil, which is very similar to what we used. Actually, it's identical to what we used for the wings. And then an eight mil. The 10 mil goes through the side that I showed earlier, like so, and the 10 mil goes in the front. We're gonna tighten that down and this job is pretty much done. Here's a quick look on the inside. You can see that uh, eight mil that we talked about and there's the 10. Spin over to the other side and there they are. Okay, we are at the final stage. I'm gonna pick this up, get it in the air as high as I can so I don't have to bend over. And we are going to put the lower skid plate bracket on and the lower retaining strap so that we can bring the winch bumper and connect it to the subframe. Okay, in the kit, you're gonna to wanna to identify these lower support straps. They go like so. You could probably force them like this, but let's not do that. We're gonna put it like that. We're gonna use the factory hardware. It comes down here. Unfortunately, this poor truck has lived a life and it is no longer with it. So we're gonna loosely put that on. Next up is our skid plate brackets. They go like this. If you put them like that, boom, boom. And when the skid plate's up, it'll lean against it and we'll put a bolt through it. We're gonna back down the winch bolts that we put in loose. The lower strap goes first. I'm really good at dropping stuff today. Oh boy. All right, I gotta set this down. I'll bring the camera in and show you what it looks like when it's all bolted up. That's what it should look like when everything is in place. I leave it loose until I get all four brackets on and then cinch it up. Okay, onto the skid plate. We reuse the hardware from the underbelly pan. Goes like so. I start with that. I get those in there. Obviously, I've got a friend helping me. And then the stainless Allens go in there and grab to those little brackets that you just installed. I'll get this on, we'll take a final look, and this job's about done. Well, there you have it, job done. Couple things that I didn't do that I wanna talk about real quick is the swivel recovery. You wanna put those on when you do the center section along with the magnets and the fair lead. This poor 110's going back out from our prototyping, so I didn't wanna waste the product on that. And when we do get a new Defender, I'll do a video from the beginning to the end so you can see every step. Uh, oh, if you have the one with the A-bar on it, you're gonna wanna get the grill on before you put the top section. It's very difficult to do with the A-bar in the way. And I think that's it, about wraps it up. See you guys on the next one. <laughs>